Well, here we go. Uh, we're talking last week about the Gamble experience, living in the studio critiques from Gamble. And this week, we're much more practical, thanks to Kevin R. Kevin likes to ask pretty practical questions. I think you've done some before, haven't you, Kevin? I like this one, doing a second skin on a painting. So I'm just going to go through these questions as they come up this time. Uh, let me do what I usually do. I'll read through it. But then I'm going to just pause as we read through it and talk about it and probably go through some images while we talk point by point, okay? So doing a second skin on a painting, how do you, and by the way, this question started out with more than that, but how do you decide what area to work on in that session? Big question, huge question. Do you usually go over the whole thing again or just certain areas? <clears throat> if just certain areas, then how do you decide precisely where to end creating a wet on dry joint. What's the best way of making such joints as seamless as possible? Good question there. And thanks in advance for any help you can offer on this topic. So let's do this with an image. The first question is how do you decide what area to work on in that session? All right, we've, we've started a painting and I told you before, I start paintings on Fridays and I don't paint on weekends. So I'm on Monday, my painting is gonna be dry and ready for me to paint on, okay? Um, so let's go with the first image. So, so I come back in on, and now these are demonstrations, by the way, and you've seen these images before, but they're very good for me to point, to use my pointer with. I think I'll give you the laser this time, give you the laser treatment. I don't know if that's a better thing or not. But, um, <clears throat> so your question is, how do you decide what area to work on in that session? Okay, now in every session, anytime you're working, how do you decide on what area you're going to work on? You do it by looking at the hole. Now you're talking to me now, right? This is what I do. This is, this is the model I was raised under. You look at the hole. And while you're looking at the hole, you want some part or another will stand out as being the least like, the area that's least like the general unity. It's that thing which is most out of unity with the hole. And if that's the area you're going to work on. And in that area... The problem will be, I'm gonna, I, I find myself needing to name it. Oh, in that area, what is that as a problem? Is that a values problem? Is that an edge problem? Is that a shape, size, proportion, and all those things? You've got this list. And you need to know what's potentially, what's, what's possible on that list. So um, how do you, <laughs> I, I, I just had dinner. By the way, I'm also, I hope this isn't, my scarf isn't too dirty. I, I'm cold up here today. <laughs> up in northern New Hampshire. So how do you decide what area to work on in that session? So the first is the big back straggler. And uh, the thing that's least like when you're looking at the hole, that's the very easiest thing to ask. That's what you're gonna work on in that session. Uh, now, if everything is equal in a painting and, and the whole thing is a very good start, this isn't a bad start, but if everything is equal, as you've handled every area, so the whole thing is coming up in unity, and the general impression really resembles the whole, uh, the general impression of what you see in front of you, except for fineness, then your approach is slightly different. At that point, you may take the choice of saying, what is that area which is most important, most significant? And that's usually a very powerful area. So you'll find yourself working in a passage like this, right? as that might be the place you start on that second day. And because you like the, your area, the power, the center power, the center of interest uh, stuff to be, to have a leadership developmentally. Do you follow that idea? So those are the two strategies. One is when you're looking at the whole, what's the back straggler of the general unity? And, um, and the second one is, if everything is equal, then what area should you work on first? It would be the area that leads that was, is most, most important to the eye in the initial phase of a painting, in the initial phase of looking, I mean to say. So what you've seen me do here is I've been around and I have articulated pretty precisely certain things. This would be in the order of something establishing at bottom, this would be a top. These are pretty precise, and I mean this very much, at least this portion of it, to be very precise. This down here to be very precise establishing the location left and right on the page. So these are all things that I would have done in the process. But my goal in the first day is to get the canvas covered with marks that are the most the powerful, the highly, that I said, when you blur your eye down, those which read best, to be extremely well dealt with. Coloristically, 
and every other kind of relationship as well, so, so as to produce the big general impression. So it'll give you the general color of the picture. It'll give you the general tonality, general value of the picture. And it'll give you the visual order of the effects as, as they exist in the painting. So you can see that I've touched on things that read down here and places here, even a hint there, something here. And there's a bunch of areas here where there's a sheer busyness, but it wasn't doing much for me. These were important because I'm establishing things that have to do with the very highest, very lowest places and establishing aspects of the composition that way. But if I find that I can look at this and say, that's a good start, meaning that's well placed on the page, the color scheme is good, the uh, visual order is right, the gesture and proportions are good of everything I've put down. So the grand unity of it is such that, as Meldrum says, you'd be able to just sort of transfer it over. It would look just, you could easily see the unity of nature through this first phase. Okay, Probably the best I can say that. Now let's go back to the second question. And by the way, I can do that with other pictures as well. But let's go back to the second question. I'll do it with the second one. If, you, if just certain areas... If, so, that, so that's the second question, sorry. Do you usually go over the whole thing again or just certain areas? Well, the answer to that's a simple one. I don't go over the whole thing again. I go over just certain areas. That being the case, if just certain areas, how do I decide precisely where to end creating a wet on dry joint? Okay. So I am painting the next day area by area, and I don't mind if I cover the whole canvas in that second day either, right? As long as the whole thing is evolving up as a, in a unity and getting closer to the as it were, the finish, but I don't, I don't mean it in a, depends on, you got to watch out what model you have, because my idea of a finish is having an idea of the picture, what the beauty of this thing is, getting it to that place where I'm now projecting that to the viewer. So keep listening over some of these other videos, you'll understand what I mean when I say things like that. So just certain areas, precisely where do I end? This is your, this is the title question, right? I, you know, the question that goes with the title of this uh, video. So I work on just certain areas. So now we're going to go down to this one again. And so, you know, what the back straggler is in this one here, it might just simply be that this area isn't pushed enough to give me the general impression. I may have to do some work in here because it doesn't look like anything. It looks like a generalized mishmash where everything else has some character that suggests the content of the area. So I may have to do some work here. One of the reasons I may not have done work here is because it's a movable feast. It's going to change. And if I put a bunch of time into this, I'm not going to get the whole rest of this done. So that would be one that I might have to catch up with. So if I'm going to paint something, I find there's some striking effect in here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to match the color uh, that I'm using, and I'm going to begin to adjust notes to that color. But I'm going to go to a different drawing to talk about this. I'm going to do this over, not that one, but this one. So let's say um, I'm going to paint in an area, and what area have I decided to paint? Well, let's just say I've decided that the problem is that the um, um, that that this area needs to to that the, some of the proportions aren't quite right down this run down here, and I have to correct them. That being a very leadership kind of thing. So what I immediately do is I take the passage I'm going to correct, and I and I match colors. I literally paint this these notes here and improve on them. Now, your first job to improve on a note is to be able to match the note. Now, this is the big skill in painting. Can you match notes, the notes you put down? Can you match them? Because that's the platform from which you're going to build the improved note. So if I'm using a palette, and a palette is sitting down there, imagine my palette sitting down here, and I have, I've, I've mixed this note up here. I mix it all up, and I set it up here, and it matches. Literally, I can't see a seam side by side there. And that's the first skill you've got to have. Okay. Now, if I happen to, as I'm looking at it, to notice that I actually want it to be a better color, looking at my palette again, there's that note that I mixed up that was yesterday's, but I want to improve it. Then I can mix that color up and add to it to make that new color that I want to make, right? And I'm going to simply soak the area in it. And my joint at that point is going to have to be a wet on dry joint. Now, I'm going to have to do the same thing out here, whatever I'm going to articulate the shape with. Remember, we're drawing with our darks. I'm going to have to match that note or improve it, right? So this is, I'm going to have to mask this note on. So I set this note here. I set that note there. I push this one out. If you're sergeant, he says, push it out an inch or something like that into the background with the intention of coming back through here and drawing with whatever's happening over here, right? So the simple answer to your question, though, is a wet on dry joint. The best place to make joints wet on dry is somewhere besides at a drawing joint. So the joint out here, I don't want the joint where the dark, 
where, where this meets that, I'm sorry, where the wet, so this is gonna be a wet paint here now, but somewhere out here, it's just gonna tie on to this, right? Now, if that were a dark into mid-tone movement, I would mix this note right here. I would make sure that at that spot right there where I already have this note, this new note here is gonna match that note and then go traveling. Now, I don't know a better way to say it except you gotta be able to match notes. Let's say I'm doing it, let's just say I'm doing it right here. I've gotta be able to match this note, long, whatever this note is, and be able to tie it on to this dry area right here. My idea with that dry area is not to make it dry, but actually wet it up so I can see the color and I have it in my brush. And then I can work this into it, just stroke it into it side by side and see that it's fusing with it. I'm not trying to, to blend it into it because that's gonna deform your entire note. So if I wanna, let's see if I, I wonder if I can say that better. I have a feeling I'm not being as clear as I should be. I like the way this laser disappears on you when you leave it there too long. That's good. Um, in any case, let's, let's just take an area like this, so simple. So the color note here, this shape has to change. This drawing's gonna come in. I, I match this note, right? I'm matching this note the way it is, and it has to paint, and I have to make it go into this note without being seen. That's where you have to learn to match a note. And that's all I'm trying to say. You make the seam where the dry hits the wet in the middle of nowhere. That's the answer to the question, the simple answer. So where this, when you're gonna draw with this, you're gonna to have to get it wet, but you don't wanna make this whole thing wet. That's a completely waste of time if the note's not bad. It's a shape problem, the note's not bad. In fact, you presume the note's not bad uh, because you don't wanna have three problems when you could have just had one. That may be a problem for another day. But as I said before, if you notice that it's really not a great note, then you can, then you can make the new note and you can paint that out into this area here. Just let it drift into that area and decide whether you're gonna do further work out there. But that's a different thing. If you know this is good, if you know this is good, the trick is to learn to match this note to whatever's sitting there, be able to match the note. Put it on here, spread it out into there, match this note, make it the same as this, and set it on there so there's no visible joint here and no visible joint here. The trick though is if you, if you haven't wet up your, your uh, paints, like the, these will, this will dry in and be the wrong value. And you'll mix a value here that'll be too light or you'll put it down and it won't match this. And it will be because you didn't wet this up. And I mean it like with oil or with retouch. I'm a retouch varnish guy. So I always have my whole painting looking a little bit sheen, just faintly sheened, because I don't want any area to be dried in because I want to see the color that I'm matching. So don't ever let this not be a fresh looking note by having you can oil it out or you can whatever you want to do, but it's got to not be a dried in note because dried in changes the value. And you'll have a very hard time working with it. And you'll, when you get all done, you find do a final varnish, you're going to see an edge along here. <laughs> it's very, you will not have matched it. Where you had that wet on dry joint, you will not have matched it. So right, let's see what the other questions were. I'm not sure if I can say more than that. Uh, what's the best way of making such joints as seamless as possible? Yeah. I hope you can follow that though. The, the, the trick in this kind of work is just to match joints. Let's just, let me just talk about this one um, just for fun. These, as you know, I, this looks like it's been shrunk a little bit. Uh, <laughs> not shrunk, but uh, skinnied up a little bit. Um, so um, in every case though, where you want, if you're gonna change something here, you don't wanna change, this note can be matched and then you come over and draw with it. You don't want the wet on dry joint to be at the spot where the drawing is. You don't want to paint this wet note and just come over and draw it into a white note. Now, having said that, I don't write rules that can't be broken. There may be a day when that's, all you have to do is make that mark and it's gonna, not gonna cause any headaches. If, if you don't paint with an even amount of paint, this doesn't work well anyway. But if you paint with too thick a paint, no matter where you go, you're gonna wind up with ridges at joints, right? And there's nothing probably less professional looking than a thick note here, just make, built up into a ridge side by side with another note over here. Either way, it could be the light being built up. You, that's where you want the joint to flow. You don't want to have, a, if a side light hits it, you don't want to have it glow up into a ridge, into a, you know, to a glary edge, like a neon light or something. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so in all treatments, uh, wet into wet joints, you're looking to make the joint out here and the joint anywhere in some larger area. 
It's not as easy to do when the area is transitioning in values, like going from midtone, getting gradually lighter to, fo to form up. It's easier, obviously, a lot easier in flat areas. But, but even if you're painting this joint here, that, that one there, moving it over or something, try to paint into the middle of this joint. Don't feel like you have to paint this and then this and then keep painting you know, your way across here over and over again. You don't need to do it. That's one of those things, the efficiencies in painting, one of the reasons I paint uh, uh, wet on dry is because the efficiencies of just moving a single spot, but they're only good if you know how to make a wet on dry joint. So Kevin's right on it. You have to make a joint that's seamless. And the only thing I can tell you is learn to match the color note. And by the way, the only way you can guarantee that you'll always match a color note Say you're matching this note. Let's just say you're matching this note here. You have to set the note out there, and and you have to you have to you have to mix something up. You know, some combination. It'll be green plus maybe a a, 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 a alizarin or something like that. And you'll make something that rather looks like this gray. You'll set it up there, and you'll you'll adjust it till it matches the value. But you, in every case, you will want to go through red, yellow, and blue till the color note dead matches. You don't want to be sort of in the ballpark especially as an Impressionist, that color matters. It's not like you're painting gray X. This is a real colored gray, right? So, the, uh, so this is a very, it's a hugely significant thing that what you do, that you, what you're doing is you're, is you're matching notes actually perfectly. And so you're going to mix these a couple of colors there, some white, some whatever, and, and whatever, and all of a sudden you're going to find you have a gray that's in the ballpark. To get it all the way over, finish it by saying, are you more in relation, by the way, in relation, but also in relation, but particularly in relation to what's out here, should you be, and for now, it's just about what's out here, but is it more red, more yellow, or more blue? And do them one at a time. Don't say it's more red, more yellow, just say, I mean, it might be, but you're simply going to say, let's add the red and see what that does. Let's add the yellow, see what that does. And frequently, you'll come back and have to re-add the green because it's, 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 it's an interesting job problem. So, but... The trick in all of this edge matching, I mean, joint making, is to be able to match colors, to match them dead on the money, okay? Now, if you, can't, if you don't match them brilliantly in, in color, at least make sure they're seamless in value. If your values are slightly different, you'll always have a line. You'll have a contour. You follow what I'm saying? So if you make, in fact, you can probably see one in there. Well, you can see in different areas there's things like that, but... There's a slightly darker, slightly lighter thing like right here, and you can see that that's a piece of drawing. It probably wasn't intended, except because this is loose at the moment. You know, I have some of those marks in here, too. This is a very rough lay-in. And it's a way, I, by the way, I get, I get a joy out of doing it this way, so don't pick on me too much. This is a thing I do. I like to stay loose while I'm being, in one sense, another sense, fairly precise. But there's a moment to be loose, and then there's going to be a, 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 re, a revisiting of, of all these passages. The first lay-in is never the final passage, uh, almost ever the final passage of any of this stuff. And, uh, but because you have to get all the way around to just to get back to some of these areas. Um, that doesn't mean you can't paint as in a sketch model and paint something more like a finish right from the beginning, but uh, you know, early on, but it's still, it's still a, this is a better strategy for, for, for the doing the research uh, when you're really trying to do great color stuff. And hurry, hurry, you know, Sketch World is not the best for that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you'll find that if you, for example, if I was matching, making this joint here one more time, and I don't quite match this, I'm going to have a, squ a square edge out here. I'm going to have a shape. It's going to show as a shape. Um, and that's, that's what I don't want. Did I have a, uh, yeah, I have this one. Do you see this spot along here? This is, this is Dick Joseph de Camp. I forgot I had this here. But you see how he painted this area here? It looks like he probably painted the white into the hair. And then he came back and draw the final, drew the final hair, but the underlying hair seems to have come back over time. Now, I'm not saying it absolutely did that. He may have not cared because it creates a certain haze that might be very much in keeping with what was actually happening. But on the other hand, that's the kind of stuff that will kind of happen if you don't if you don't paint solid lights over darks, when you do this kind of stuff and you're moving the drawing in from the dark into the light. But that's just a different discussion. That's the discussion. That's that discussion, put it that way. But um, so I do try to, when I'm doing this kind of thing, I try to make sure the darks are, are adequately thick so that it's not going to come back and haunt me. And they're famous for doing it, Sergeant. Everybody who paints directly 
that's one of the little things that will you'll every once in a while it'll get you, where you where you moved a light over into a dark and you didn't have a, 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 a thick enough light to do the job. Um, I find that in some of these things, it's smarter to actually paint it twice, to do the area twice, just to make sure you get a couple layers over that. But uh, yeah, that's all I can say. I think that covers it. Color matching is the key to this stuff. And you put your joint in the middle of nowhere every time. If you make this one, try to find a place in the middle of here. But don't make this the end, right? You don't make that the joint. You don't want to wet on dry joint where there's a physical joint, like there's a chin, a value joint. You don't want to do it there. Doesn't mean you never can, but it's not optimal, okay? For our way of working. All right. And it'll keep you fluid. It'll keep you feeling good about your the way your paint's moving, you know, and always this whole idea of moving in and out, painting wet into wet. What's the old aphorism? If you're not painting wet into wet, you're not painting. So this idea of painting out, as Sergeant says, and then coming back and drawing with the darks, it always implies pushing out with the lights and coming back and drawing with the darks. There are days when that happens the other way, but it's not pretty. It's not particularly common um, uh, as a routine. It's not what you. That's why it's said that way. That's a routine thing. All right, let's go back and look at what your commentary was. How do you decide what area to work on in that session? Yes. Do you usually go over the whole thing again, or just certain areas? I am always looking. I mean, the plan is to go over the whole thing again. So keep that in mind that you're you really are trying to to uh, maintain a unity of surface as you, as you rise, right, as the whole painting gets better. So I wind up usually with the whole thing covered in what some people refer to as skins in, in three surfaces, three skins. And some places plenty more than that, and other places that's just it. Once in a while it's just two, but it usually it winds up being three, three layers of paint. So, um, but it doesn't mean you have to cover, you don't have to, you don't have to paint the whole thing out. It's all this, dramatic talk about sergeant painting stuff out. You know, you can do that with a head that's a start. If you, if, and, and I don't know to what extent, I mean, people don't, you know, you don't have everybody who is, you don't have a person always standing there in every situation that, where sergeant painted as an example. So we don't know all the things he may have done, but there are routine things that he talked about and things that he did that people did see. But do you paint a whole head out? There's a time to do that. And there's a time not to do that. And so this idea of knowing how to paint uh, a, a joint, who said it actually? I think it was, a, it may have been a conversation Sergeant had with Joseph DeCamp. And he said to him, I don't know how you do that and keep the unity. And he meant painting wet on dry. I'm quite sure that's out there somewhere. So that may be, that, where, I, where that conversation is, I don't know. That's interesting. I do remember that one though. And it was a direct conversation between him and, and Joseph DeCamp. So um, he wasn't critiquing it and saying one must do this. He said, I, for me to work, I just got to reopen it and I'll wet it all up again and that sort of thing. And the way he was talking suggested something like what some of you are asking. So, but I don't paint whole areas out. I, I, why would you go backwards in a painting? Uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it till it is, you, you follow. But on the other hand, my starts aren't such that the whole thing is sort of haphazard, like a rub in. My, my starts contain very articulate joints. Like I was showing you um, at the top of the head here, this is very specific. That looks like hair overlapping other hair with the light effect. These are very specific joints. So I'm not out here doing random sort of goofy stuff. If I was, I would, <laughs> I would have to paint the whole thing over again, right? I really would, because they're not very useful. To be, when there are, when you're, see, the thing is very broadly expressed, but these points are extremely articulate points because they need to become useful. They need to be very precise. You have to be able to make them into points and articulate squareness of edges are part of that point making process. So they have to look, they have to appear. <laughs> they will show when you get them good, they will actually show as, oh, that looks like the hair. That looks like the light on the neck. They will do that, but you're not painting light on the neck to do it. You're painting value relationships, edge relationships, effect relationships, and angling, angle relationships and so on and so forth. So, um, but once you've established these in our way of working, why would I paint them out and have to start the whole painting over again? I've established the top and the bottom. You follow? These guys over here are much more mobile, but then things that are sort of extraneous to the major event in a painting, which is this stuff, those things are all part of the adjustments that, that, are, that, are, that are there as a, as, a, as a way of improving the composition, the movable feast, as is the hair. All these are much more mobile. These are areas are more mobile. Your pose you've chosen of her head, the turn of the head and all that sort of stuff, and the shadow, the way the shadows are working on it, that's all the stuff that you chose for a reason that's very, that's very fixed, shall we say. 
But this stuff is mobile, the hair, these things. So those can look mobile for a longer time. You can explore with them. You can try things, mess around. So, but yeah, that's my point. Uh, if, you're, if, if you're being articulate, see, I used to find that I would do, be inarticulate and then I would say, well, you didn't mean anything. It looks, doesn't, and I started leaving messages to myself, you mean this. And that's what a, the precision of this sort of thing is. Doesn't mean it's a final version even. It's just got enough quality. I call it the adequate level of precision to be useful. And that's precision in every way, light effect way, sharpness of edge, contrast, uh, uh, shape, you know, the big angle stuff, the form, <laughs> uh, anything that, you know, the, the sort of anything that relates to these things, even the rounding of this up here, oddly enough, has, has some content in it that is on a level of being more advanced than just going down there and saying perfunctory things that you'll inevitably have to go in and deal with tomorrow. So I'm not a rub-in guy. I don't like the crude rub-in. But you can see that you could say, well, that's not a crude rub-in. It almost, yeah. it's a rub-in in a certain sense. But every place in the visual order that needs, that's going to be a power player in the game has already been articulated and discussed. And it leads, while a lot of things are, are, are broadly expressed and generalized and, 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 and in motion, as it were, okay? I probably said enough, I don't know there's anything else. Let me go back and look at that one more time. If certain areas, then how do you decide precisely where to end? Yeah, what's the best way of making such joints as seamless as possible? Well, that's the best stuff I can do for you. All right, Kevin. All right, let me know if that works, and uh, I think I better get out of here because I'm about to run out of time on this, uh, on this uh, memory card. All right, again, thank you all for your kind donations, for uh, subscribing, sharing, liking, all the above. And, uh, and I hope you have a great week painting, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.